Good morning. Welcome to the Cone Zone. That's Lowell Cone. I'm Grant Cone. We were off last week and now we're back. Dad, it's great to see you. You have a phenomenal haircut. <laughs> I haven't had it this short since I was eight years old. I was over last week getting getting a haircut and my mind wandered. And the guy, I could hear the thing going, yeah. and then he, he, I didn't he ask turned me. <laughs> He says, how's that look? And I thought, oh, my God. I said, it looks great. Thanks a lot. I won't need a haircut for half a year. It's too late to say it doesn't look great. No, it looks phenomenal, right. Dad. It's a new <laughs> look for you. You actually do look eight years old. I think this is nice. It makes you look younger. Well, thanks, because I'm going to be 78 in November. All right. Well, today we're going to lead off with a topic that's inspired by a good friend of ours, Mike Silver. Right. Who... um wrote an article saying that Brock Purdy, well, the, the headline is that Brock Purdy is a baller. Before I get into it, I want to say a little story about uh, Matt, Mike Silver real quick. Mike Silver's great. Earlier this offseason, he said that there was a real chance that the Niners could get rid of Trey Lance and keep Brandon Allen and Sam Darnold. And when I read the article, I tweeted, this is insane. He ended up being right. And when I tweeted it, he said, I'll take a carne asada burrito and a uh, iced coffee little buddy, meaning like, Dude, I've been doing this for like 40 years. Get out of my face. You're an intern compared to me, which I thought was funny. And then he ended up being right. So what I did was we were down in Santa Clara and I uh, door dashed the best burrito from the best taqueria in, in San Jose, uh, La Taqueria or whatever it's called. La, La, Vi La Vix, sorry. And I got him a, uh, a burrito and a nice coffee because I owed him one and he took it in a good spirit and now we're friends again. Oh, good. Okay. Um, let me just give a little background because this fascinates me, the meaning of words. Michael had a story, yes, a column yesterday in the Chronicle. The headline said that Purdy is the baller, B-A-L-L-E-R, the Niners need. In the article, Michael did not refer to Purdy as a baller, but he said he can flat out ball. So I'm, I'm uh, conflating them and saying he called him a baller. Michael, if you watch this or see this, Believe me, Iggy and I are not putting you down. It's I may disagree with the column, but it's the kind of column that really got me to think. And that's really uh, important for a columnist. I didn't always achieve that. So we're taking off on, on a, a very complex and interesting topic you introduced. So what Iggy and I are trying to establish is at this stage of his career, is Brock Purdy a baller? We'll come back to that in a moment and we'll define baller to the best of our ability in a moment. My working hypothesis is when you see a baller, you know it. You don't even need a definition. So Iggy, let's I love take sports terms like that, like where there's no real official definition, but everyone essentially knows what it is. Yes. And, and the term baller again I don't know what happens in England or Europe, but it sounds so American to me. And yes. I really like that. So Iggy, yes. uh, if you don't mind, I'll go first. I'll name who I think is a quintessential baller. And let's take turns for a few moments. Brett Favre. Brett Favre was absolutely a baller. Yes. Yes. Steve Young. Absolutely. Patrick yeah. Mahomes. Yeah. Josh Allen, in spite of his turnovers. I love it. Russell Wilson, when he was younger. Uh, in fact, he was the ultimate bowler. Yeah. Um, Aaron Rodgers, 10 years ago. Dan Marino. John Elway. Joe Namath. Yeah. Um, Warren Moon. Oh, God, that's a good one. Boy, Warren was he Moon. a baller. Warren yeah. Moon. Drew Brees. Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly. Okay. Jim Kelly. Can we, could we stop there? Because yeah. I think we, we got the idea. Let's name some people who aren't ballers. Mm. And we're keeping Brock Purdy out of this. I'll start. Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, talk about not a baller. <laughs> right. My cousin. Kirk Cousins. I, <clears throat> I totally agree. I'm going to say another one. Dak Prescott. I'd have to say not a baller. Not a baller. Alex Smith. The quintessential efficient quarterback who was 
definitely not a baller. And Iggy, he didn't have the mentality of a baller. No, absolutely not. No. I'll give you another one. But not a baller. Philip Rivers. (laughs) Yeah. Matthew Stafford. Oh, God. Do I agree with that? Matthew Matthew Stafford is a kind of quarterback who looks good in the first quarter. It's great. Great in the first half. I don't know. It just you just know the two interceptions are coming, not just one, freaking two. Yeah. We, uh, okay. So I think we've sort of, by eyeballing it, we've made a distinction between a baller and a not baller. And, you know who's not a baller? I'm sorry, Gino. Oh, Iggy. You know I don't. I, I don't. I don't care for his work at all. Gino, not a baller. I'm sorry. He might be good. He might be efficient, but nah. How about the the kid in Baltimore? Yeah, Lamar. Oh, he's a bull. Yeah, he's a baller. Yeah, big time. The kid in Chicago with Justin Fields. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Okay. How about Hertz in Philly? I think the jury's still out on him. I agree. Jury's still I out. I think the jury's still out on. I'm not going to say no, but I still think he has more to prove, and I think he has the best team around him, kind of like Purdy. And he does some really nice things. He throws a really nice deep ball. Borderline. He could be. Borderline. I think he's got more to prove. Borderline. Maybe he's a baller in training. A baller in training. Yeah. Yeah. A, uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. Was Kaepernick a baller? At first, God. At first he was. His first game. Yes, but then he fell away. He he wasn't he, he wasn't committed. I I don't believe. But at first, that's why he beat out Alex because he was a bowler and Alex wasn't. He put up thirty one points in the Super Bowl. I mean, you could argue he wasn't the reason they lost. Although he had him there at the end. But I do I do think he he was a baller at one time. I do. I, I told. And you know what? At first, he was a pleasure to watch. But we knew his stock was going down when um. What what's his face in in St. Louis started yelling at him from the press box? Trent Dilfer, excuse Trent, me, Trent no. Balky. Trent, he started in front of the whole media. Throw the damn Balky. ball, and, and you knew that they were what they felt about him in the organization. Yeah, and you knew something was off with him. I think it was the beginning, twenty fourteen. They played Chicago, and he got a personal foul call because like people kept like saying good good job Colin or. or Players on the Bears kept going up to him and kind of taunting him in, in nice ways, and he said something and got a 15-yard penalty like in the fourth quarter when it was close. He lost that game. He started to unravel. As people got to know him a little bit better, they anyway, he was a baller. Is Brock Purdy a baller? If you're sitting okay. in the barbershop and someone said, who's Brock Purdy, would you say, oh, he's a baller? Could I just slow down for one moment? Let's mm-hmm. try to give some adjectives of what a baller is. Yes. And then we'll come to Brock. Okay? Sure. So I'm going to give one is being daring, daring, taking risks. Yeah. Creative. Creative. Yeah. Um, being able to take over a game on his own. That's a good one. Being able to take over a game on his own. You're dominant. Dominant. Yeah. Those are good ones. I like those. I, I like those words. And I would add one more. Being good, being efficient, being a good quarter, uh, being a good point guard. But when the time comes, being a hero. I like that. Yeah. Not just managing the game, but also rising. Being a above. hero. Being yeah. a hero. So yeah. give, given the examples we've provided and our tentative definition for you, Iggy, like, is like Joe at, Montana proved his baller status before he won a Super Bowl, right? I mean, that throw to Dwight Clark was the hero moment before he was a champion. Absolutely, for yes. both of them. And yes. we didn't even mention Joe, and the reason is he didn't even need goes to be without mentioned. Saying. Goes, goes without saying. saying. Yeah. Goes without saying. He's been a um, baller since 1981. Really? Yeah. So, given our examples and our adjectives. At this stage of his career, Iggy, is Brock Purdy a bowler? Not yet. I agree. Not saying he won't be. You know, just like Hertz. Not saying he won't be, but not yet. And Iggy, what is 
what does he need to achieve to be to achieve bowler status? Well, it'd be nice if he could hit one of those deep throws for starters. Right. Right. Because he does a lot of stuff that make you that makes you say, okay, this guy's really good. Makes you like give a golf clap, makes you appreciate him, nod your head in a, in in, a, in, a, in a, uh, approval. But I think ballers make you like drop your jaw and say, wow, and want to tell people. Like, remember when you were a kid and you played uh, punch ball? Who was is, who is the greatest punch baller of all time? In uh, Weingarten. Weingarten. He was a baller. People would talk about him. If you see this guy, he's going to punch it farther than anyone you've ever seen ever. Like, I don't think people talk about Brock Purdy that way. Like, hey, when you Brock, watch Brock Purdy play, you're going to see stuff you've never seen. That's... That's a baller. I don't with him you're going to say you're going to see extremely efficient play for a 23-year-old who was the last pick in the draft. You're never going to believe it. He was the last you have to give all that kind of context. And when you and he's only 6 feet tall and he doesn't have that strong of an arm and yet he just never loses. Great story, not a baller yet. Right. And I think another attribute of a baller, he does things that you've never seen before. Yes. And the thing about Purdy, everything he does, we've seen before. Yeah. He's not been required to to go to the hero level. You don't no. want to play hero ball all the time, but it, but eventually you're called upon to do it. Joe yeah. did it. Steve did it. I'm going to tell you someone else. Um, Garcia. Yeah, he was a baller. Oh, he was down like 20 something in a playoff game and came back and won. Jeff Garcia yeah. was a was a baller. Uh, yeah. Iggy, I loved watching him work. Yeah, he never had the defense that Brock Purdy has or that Jimmy Garoppolo has. You talk yeah. about the hero moment. Jimmy never had to be a hero in a game like that. The Niners really carried him until the end of the Super Bowl. He had to make that one long throw to Emmanuel Sanders. If he were a baller, he would have hit that throw. Of course, that would have been the game. Steve Young would have hit that throw. Joe Montana would have hit that throw. Um, and I think that's why some people, maybe that's why people made a bigger deal of these misses from Brock Purdy than, than needed to be made because it just gave you flashbacks of Jimmy. And you're thinking, Brock hasn't had to make these hero moments yet. And in a big game, if he has to, is he going to do this? Is he going to do what Jimmy did? And we don't know. We have no uh, He might not. But those throws are like, uh-uh. So, yeah, I think he has something to prove. Yeah. And, you know, clearly Kyle Shanahan called those plays, called those throws. Kyle would never tell you what he was thinking, but he must have been disappointed. He hoped right. they, I mean, he didn't think, oh, I don't care if he connects. He clearly wanted him to. And what we knew, at least as of the the last game, he had a limitation, which is yeah. that he may not have a long game. He has a beautiful short game beautiful. and an intermediate game. I mean, he, as good as anyone in the league. Yeah. But sometimes you have to blow the top off. And again, I'm going to remind you that, the Raiders, when they were good, had a long game. We know their philosophy was, we'll take in completions, but the one long bomb can, can over the top, can change the game. Bill Walsh talked to Al Davis about trading Joe Montana to the Raiders. Al said, let me see some tape. Calls back uh, Bill. He says, my wide receivers will outrun Joe's arm. We don't want him. <laughs> we'll take Steve Young. And Bill said, yeah, right. <laughs> right. And I just want to point out, you, look, a lot of us haven't weren't old enough to watch Joe Montana play. Go watch his highlights. You'll see any number of throws where he puts it 30, 35, 40 yards downfield with loft and arc and trajectory. And it's beautiful. Like, when you watch Brock Purdy try to throw deep, he really muscles up. He has a little crow hop. And then the ball comes out flat because I think – and then he misses long. To me, that's a guy who's – putting everything he can into it. It's not an easy throw. And that's tr troubling to me. It's really troubling. Instead of throwing it, he was heaving it. Heaving it. And it came out like a shot, like uh, like a shot put, like a javelin. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's low. It's good. That's, you're going to miss that throw. If you put it up high, it seems like you get more. It's like shooting a basketball. If you shoot it real low on a line, you're probably not going to make it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Now, one thing that, that Brock does really well that Bill Walsh always emphasized for the most part, when he's got a receiver, he hits him in the numbers. Yep. Trey yep. Lance didn't do that. Jimmy doesn't do that. Um, so he has parts of Joe's game, but he's not Joe. 
I would like he has to the add the creativity one of a baller. He has the confidence of a baller, but I don't know that he has the actual talent of a, of baller. a baller. And that yeah. is to be determined, but you and I yes. have doubts. We have our doubts. Now, I want to yeah. add one thing. A lot of 49er fans who are watching us say, oh, there goes Lowell and Iggy again. They're a bunch of haters. I don't think we're being haters. We like Brock Purdy. Um, we, we, I admire him. I think yeah. he's a really good quarterback, but yeah. we're not fans. We're trying to be analytical. And I think Michael Silver provided a very interesting talking interesting, point, yeah. and we're talking about it. And you got to acknowledge that it's a team sport with like 22 different starters. It's hard to isolate what one person's impact is on winning and losing, but you got to acknowledge that he's on a really, really, really good team that Jimmy Garoppolo won a lot of games with. So it, if we seem like we're coming off a little negative, we're just trying to isolate one person's impact. And you said like a baller can sometimes be a hero and carry his team uh, to victory. He hasn't had to do that yet on this team. And he may not have to do that for a while, but I think to win a Super Bowl at some point, he'll have to. I'll tell you another thing a baller can do. You're way behind in the second half yeah. and you can come back and win the game. Yeah. This kid hasn't been way behind. No, no, um, no. Now, they were behind a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the last seven? game. They were behind seven. And and they seven. really, at the end of the half, they got it. But mm -hmm. another test of a baller is all things seem lost. Yep. And then you come back. Yep. Yep. Agree. All right, let's take a couple super chats. Ethan M., if Purdy stays on this trajectory, will he be top 10? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I would hope he is. I, I, I think he's a wonderful player and a wonderful story. I don't, Iggy, I don't know the answer. How about you? Borderline. 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 I can see it. Maybe. Uh, two buck Chuck brother Bob says, Iglet, thanks for the steak dinner and wine. Good time. Sorry. He wanted to meet up with me in LA. Sorry. I was with my wife. Ethan M says, I think BP's confidence in himself is the key to his relationship with Kyle. He is not afraid to take charge and makes his own decisions on the field. Ethan M. Well, could we talk about making their own decisions on the field? Yeah. They go to the line of scrimmage with at least two plays. Sometimes they have more. Alex Smith also made his own decisions on the field. And Alex Smith generally made good decisions but they were too cautious. Purdy yeah. is not cautious. Yeah. In that regard, he, in that regard, he is a baller. He's not yeah. cautious. There was a, a guy he plays for the saints. I forget his name. Um, he, Cameron Jordan, I think he was saying that, you know, there's good, fast decisions, uh, bad, fast decisions. Sometimes those can be okay because you made them fast, but good, slow decisions. You know, every, those are, we call those Kirk Cousins. Like, yeah, you were right, but you were a little too slow, buddy. It didn't work. Like, that's, you, you, you could be as right as you want to be, but football happens fast and you got to make your, yeah. make up your mind and do something quick. Good, slow decisions. We call them Kirk Cousins. I fun. love it. Uh, was Tom Brady a baller? Manny oh, P. God. Oh, God. I have to say so. Yeah. I have to say so. Yeah. I mean, like, how many, how many times did he bring that team? 28 to three. That was him, right? 28 yeah. to three. He was down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a baller. Nice haircut, Papa Cone. Says Anthony. <laughs> I look like an idiot. Okay, thank you. Barry, a baller's been a, a member for two years. Love you, man. And thank he's you. a baller. And he's a baller. Lowell loved your work over the years. Thank you. More important, 97 or 54, asks Office of Jed York. Any QC meeting upcoming? Yeah, next week. More important. We could talk, Post, we could talk a little about 97 if you, if you yeah. want. Let's talk about Iggy. Him. Iggy. Where is he? Uh, is he on the field? I see him out there. He's wearing his jersey. He looks like he's in maybe, great shape. Maybe it's an imposter. Maybe they locked him in a closet and it's an imposter wearing his jersey. I don't know. I don't know. It, I don't know. He, has he had an impact on the games? Yeah, he's made an impact on the games. But they're not paying him to make an impact. They're paying him to sack the quarterback a lot of times. They're paying him quarterback money, and uh, he's giving them like Eric Armstead stuff. Like, hey, the, 
the box score might not show it, but if you really watch the tape, you can see what I did. Like, great, man. Super nice. Cool. Do, do you think he's not in football shape yet? Obviously, he's not in football shape yet. Clearly, he's not in football shape yet. And he's still a good player, but, you know, maybe it would have been nice if he could have been in training camp. But I guess there's, hey, there's still 2-0, and so no harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. Could I no harm, no uh, also um, say something from a journalist's point of view about him? Mm -hmm. I watched, uh, I've watched his, uh, his um, last media, you know, after the game, he talked to the media and I've seen him before. Let me give my impression of him. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to do an impression. Let me explain what I think. He is impressive looking. He's big. He's well cared for. He's handsome. He's intelligent. Um, he's polite in that he doesn't cut people off and he pays attention to the question. He looks, he looks you in the eye and mm -hmm. he seems to care about understanding the question. So through all of that, I think he's great. His answers are corporate. Yeah. They're very uh, uh, terse, very short, yeah. never enlightening. Never yeah. enlightening. It's clearly what he feels. He has a professional duty to the team to stand there, but he'll be damned if he'll actually say anything worthwhile. Is that your impression of him? Yeah, and he's like barely awake. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's barely awake. Yeah. It's like his eyes are like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know. As opposed to Fred Warner. Yeah who right. comes out with energy and actually will answer questions. Now he's a little like he's the head coach of the team. Like, he's yeah, like he's the, the head coach of the team. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, what I said, my feeling is if I were there and I'm not there and I'm never going to ever be there again, I would try to get both off his program. Yeah. I would yeah. do it. And the way I, I, when I had players like that who were going through the motions, let's face it, right? right? I yeah. would say, I understand what you mean, but what you said, but what do you mean by this word? Yeah. That always screwed them up because they're not used to yeah. answering real questions or why did you say that? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Iggy, I am not encouraging you to do that. You're in a, it's a different world. You're in a different position. So I'm saying, don't do that. But Lowell Cohn, I'm talking about myself in the third person. I apologize. Uh, when I was a young man, I, um, I had more stability than you. I was with a big paper and all that. I certainly would have done that. Bosa carries himself like he's the only future Hall of Famer in the building. That he's so far above everyone. Kyle, everyone. And I, it's, it's a, kind of amazing. Maybe he probably is a future Hall of Famer if he stays healthy. But he like talks like he's royalty. You know, like just showing up and saying and listening and moving his mouth and saying words counts. Where it's just like, okay, all right, well. I Iggy, hope you when you have locker room access, does he interact with the other players? Not really. Not really. He's not really out there except for today. He'll be out there for a few minutes to talk and then he'll be gone. You never actually see him? No. I got to tell you, Iggy, that drives me crazy because when I yeah. used to cover the 49ers, Joe Montana was right there. It's not right. like you had to wonder, oh, is it Joe's days to day to talk? He was here. Steve Young was here. Brent Jones was here. Jerry Rice was here. Ronnie Lott was there. So I don't understand this, Iggy. You know, there's like back rooms now that they can hide out in. Yeah. You'd they like do. to hide in the closet at the back room. So I, I I don't know maybe Bose is better than Fred Warner although not so far this year I think Fred Warner might be more important. Ezio Sanchez has great haircuts, sir. If either of you are ever in SoCal, I'll pay for your haircut. My barber is the best. <laughs> He's in Paris, a few miles east of Riverside. Paris. Uh, Paris. <laughs> That's, Paris. Can we say heard what, what? You've heard of it. I've heard of it. Good town. Maynard uh, Keenan says, for the doubters, Purdy recognizes his misses and will work on correcting that. He takes this seriously and is very prideful of his craft. He doesn't want to disappoint Kyle. I, I don't doubt any of that. Um, I, I think the issue, again, with the misses, the long ones, is it's not really an issue of wanting to complete the passes or working or your intent or your will or your desire. It's like it just might be a limitation. Yeah, and I want to also well, say for – 
for the doubters, I said that Iggy and I have our doubts. It's not wrong to have doubts. It doesn't mean we don't like him or want him to fail or we're bad people. It's it's our analysis, and it's fair to do. Yeah, and I in think fact, it's... if we didn't tell you, we'd be jerks. Yeah, I think that's the difference between journalists and jerks. I think it's fair for journalists. We're, we're supposed to be like skeptical by nature. It's not our job to be the one creating the bandwagon or leading the the crew of believers. I don't. It's not my job to be a believer. If he wins a Super Bowl, great. But I'm supposed to be the one making sure that he can do it. Right. And if he does it, we praise him. And if he doesn't, we won't praise him. And we have no emotional involvement. That's the difference between us and a fan. We just cover the team. We don't root for the team. And it's interesting because when people meet me, what you used to do for a living? Sometimes I say I was in education. <laughs> but if, if I say, you know, I, I was a journalist, what kind of sports journalism? Oh, did you root for the, you rooted for the teams. And I have to say, actually, no. And they look at me like I'm sort of from Mars. Yeah. I got an Uber back from the airport yesterday and the guy was a big Niner fan. And he was like, are you Grant Cohn? So that was cool. Um, and then he was like, so do you fly with the team plane? <laughs> <laughs> no. They can't stand me. Absolutely not. Not that I, if they liked me, that I would. But he's, he was like, so are you cool with any players in the team? And I was like, not really, man. <laughs> not really. I mean, I, some of them are nice to be in the locker room, but it's funny what fans think. So are you friends with anyone on the team? No, not really. That's not how it works. <laughs> they can't imagine because if they were there, they'd want to be friends with Brock Purdy. Yes. But and you realize that, that Brock Purdy doesn't want to be friends with you. Right. And. <laughs> There are times, and Iggy knows it, when you'll get a new journalist who tries to be friends with the players and the other journalists despise him. Iggy, yeah. let's not use a name, but there was that, that kid who came yeah. in and said, he came into the, into the press room and said yeah. he got autographs, yeah. right? And he was yeah. bragging. Everybody was quiet. And I didn't I say, who the hell are you? Yeah. Yes. What you, and he tried to shake my 11 hand. 11 years ago. Yeah. Try, and I said, don't you dare touch me. You, yeah. you're, you're, not, you're not a journalist. Get out of here. Yeah. You did that. Say really that really happened. Yeah. Yeah, it really did happen. He deserved it. Jesse Thompson said Brady wasn't a baller in the beginning. He developed. He was a game manager who won a Super Bowl. You know, I think all in all, Tom Brady was a pretty good football player. I think all in all, Brady was a baller the whole time, Jesse. Over here, yeah. rewriting history. Sean O'Leary says, going to be in Minneapolis for the Monday night football game on 1023. I'm flying for it, staying right near the stadium. Buy you a beer. Sure. Yeah, I'll be there. Absolutely. Hit me up, Sean. Um, Jay Figs Ramon says, Bosa's barely awake when asked about plays on the field by his own team. He doesn't even know who made the interception. That is true. That is true. Uh, Diamador Lenore made like the game ceiling interception in, in LA. You remember that interception from number two? Yeah. So after the game, someone asked, like, so what'd you think? I don't know what the question was. What'd you think of Lenore's interception? Like, did you guys you know, cause some pressure on that play? And he goes, Oh, Lenore picked it off. I thought it was Traverius Ward. This was like a half hour <laughs> after the play happened. He's like, Hey, you really don't care, man. That's great. <laughs> oh, Lenore? I thought it was Traverius. No, it wasn't. Faithful to the base is too young to have witnessed the 80s, 90s SF glory days. Papa Cone, did Joe or Steve ever miss a couple layups in a game like Brock Purdy did last Sunday? I'm sure they did. Of course they did. Of course they did, but not consistently, not three in no. one game. Yeah. Um, Joshua Wyatt says, if you can only address one need, is the right side of the offensive line or cornerback going to have a bigger impact when facing the Eagles or Cowboys in the playoffs? Well, having a shaky offensive line can get your quarterback hurt, and that's the quickest way to have your season fall apart. The Niners could have could struggle on off on defense and still score a lot of points on offense. I, I think they need to address that right tackle, but it's going to be tough. Um, Mr. Blankens Archimedes Blankenship says, "My son Rain and I love the show. He's at USC working on his PhD, and he took me to the Rams game on Sunday. Can you thank him for me? Thank you, Rain, for taking thank your you, dad. Thank you, Rain. You're an, you're a good son. You're a good son, even though you go to USC." <laughs> UCLA guy. 
That's right. Do you see the hat I got? Oh, I got you a shirt. You'll give it to me tonight at dinner. I got you a short a shirt when I got this. And it, yeah, I'll give it to, to you tonight because I went to the, the student union. It's a good one. All right, let's move on. Uh, no, there was a question you didn't get. Oh, well, my goodness. Ethan M says, do you believe he's uh, more bad than good or vice versa? Are we Ooh. talking about Brock? Yeah. Okay, more, Brock. More good. Oh, much more good. Not even close. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everything he does is really, really good, except he seems to have a limit. But everything he does, uh, uh, listen, I think the Niners, not only I think, I know the Niners are lucky to have him. They didn't yes. know what they had, and they pressed him into service because they needed to. He yes. has saved their tush. I am yes. very enthusiastic about him. I'm tr it's like I'm a literature guy. Sometimes I read a book and I say, is this a good novel or is it an all-time great novel? I know he's a good quarterback. I'm asking, is he an all-time great quarterback? Is right. he Moby Dick? Is he at that level? Yeah. I don't know about that, but at this point in his career, I think you can say that given the position he plays and how efficient he is at playing it in spite of this one limitation, which may not even be a long-term limitation, he's probably the biggest bargain in sports. All of I sports. agree. I mean, my God. And to have that, I think is a big reason why the Niners are what they are. A lot of teams would like to have a really cheap quarterback and spend on other things, but how many teams have Brock Purdy? Yeah. So he enables them to build a the team the way they want. Good for him. Good for them. Iggy, I want to just say one thing. Say one in thing. The past, in the past, people have said I was too loud, so I lowered my volume today. Would somebody just, if I'm too loud or too soft, will you let me know? If I'm all right, you don't need to let me know. Yeah, let us know. All right, here, uh, let's compare quarterbacks from Mike Shanahan's coaching tree. Kyle Shanahan, Mike McDaniel, and Sean McVay, and not necessarily as, you know, X's and O's guys, but just the way they present themselves to the public. These are the face of the franchise, and they are these are like some of the most highly regarded coaches in professional football, these three. What's okay. your impression of them? What, what makes them different? Okay. Iggy and I started talking about this because some on Sunday I had my computer on and I got all the post-game stuff from the Niners, but then somehow – Sean McVay came on and they had his post game presser. I had never heard him talk before and I've never met him. Although I knew his grandfather, John McVay, very well and liked him a great deal. Here's one word I have to say about Sean McVay bullshitter. Or in bullshitter. Brooklyn, we would have said bullshit artist. Yeah. Iggy, I have never heard such an insincere man. It yeah. was so unimpressive, and he's representing yeah. the team. So here's what he's saying. Now, they just got beat at home by their rival, and I think it was the ninth time in a row in regular season games. He comes in jaunty, like you would have yeah. thought he won. Jaunty. He's like, you know, this this stuff. And you you would have thought he won. And he's saying, that was good. We we accomplished so much. And, you know, uh, we have a, we're building a culture here. And that really helped our culture and all of this. And when he would call on writers, but it was one, I don't know who this writer is. He goes, Timmy, he calls him Timmy, like he's their friend. You know, he's not their friend. He doesn't care yeah. about them. So he's yeah. a phony, a yeah. bullshitter. And. Yeah. He lost the freaking game, and he's yeah. now gone down nine times in a row. Yeah. If I were in the room, I would have said, you know, I, I know this is very good for your culture, but you <laughs> lost the you lost the game, and you've yeah. lost them in regular season games nine in a row, if I have the number correct. Does Kyle Shanahan have your number? Ooh. Oh. His, his face would have turned so red, Dad. He would have been pissed. You know, what is it about Kyle Shanahan that you can't get over the hump? Yeah. That's to to Kyle's credit, he would never come in with any of that phony, optimistic bullshit after a loss, ever. No. Here's what I feel. That. Here's what I feel about Kyle. I feel he's a little negative, but then people feel you and I are. And he's dour. You and mm -hmm. I are not dour. We're, we're playful. No. And Mike he's, McDaniel's playful. We'll get. He's terrific. Yeah. But, but Kyle is honest. 
Yes. Maybe even to a fault. He's honest right. about his, not about himself, but about no. his players. He's yes. honest about his players. And he will give you an answer that's relevant to your question. He won't go Timmy. And, and you know what I mean? And he won't say we're building a culture and all that kind of bullshit. So yeah. I ad, I admire Kyle Shanahan for how on message he is and how open he is to hard questions. I do. Mike McDaniel is the best of the three. First of all, I think he may be the most intelligent of the three. Y yeah. You know him, Miggy. He's really bright, isn't he? Yeah, he went to Yale. Yeah. He, he, went to has, Yale. he has a twinkle in his eye. He, he has humor, which neither of the other guys has any humor at all. And from what I know about him, if you ask him a football question, he'll talk about it honestly and he won't say, well, I can't tell you about that. He'll yeah. actually answer. He turns his press conferences into like graduate uh, seminars. And where Kyle will give you 10 minutes today, he'll talk for 10 minutes. McDaniel will give you 25. Uh, 25. Uh, Iggy, yeah. you liked him when he was with the Niners, didn't you? He's the best. He's the best. The absolute best. He's what you want every coach to be. I think I, well, Robert Sala was great too. I, I think I root for McDaniel and Sala because if they have success, then it might encourage more coaches to be more like them and less like Belichick. Because I hate the Belichickification of the NFL. It's terrible. Belichick is such a drag, Iggy. He looks like he's gone through life sucking on a sour lemon. Yeah. He's such a sourpuss. Yeah. I wouldn't want to spend a minute in his company. I don't what see I how anyone could. Nah. Awful. And I feel like he had so much success. Every coach felt like they had to be like him, be a jerk, say nothing, be difficult, yeah. don't help the media. Like, no, that sucks. And it only hurts the entire league. And it's good to have people like Mike McDaniel who have personality and humor and actually want to teach not only the media, but by proxy the fans more about the sport. So they're more educated. I mean, they're interested. They want to know. Tell them. You be the one who informs them. That way, that that way, you're you're the uh, you're their Socrates. And you know, Harbaugh, for all his personality quirks, he wanted to do that too. Not That's really, depending on his mood. He had, he was moody. He, was he moody. had about five personalities, right? He had, he had about he five personalities. One of his personalities like doing that. One of his personalities was like, "I'm not answering questions today." <laughs> it's true. And before yeah. he would come in the room, we would say to each other, "Which gym will it be today?" Right. Yeah, sometimes he'd be just talking at length, using metaphors and talking about uh, <laughs> foils war and what he watched on television that night. Other times he'd be like monosyllables, like, did we do something? Was it something he said or was it Jed? Like, I don't know. But yeah, Jim was yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. Remember the time just before um, Thanksgiving, he talked about turkeys and he showed one of his kids turkeys being slaughtered and they decided not to have turkey that year. Didn't that yeah. happen? Yes, he did. He talked all about He's turkeys. Really Yes, I like Jim Harbaugh a lot. He was really cool. Yeah, me too. And it was it was uh, interesting. I like last, go ahead. One other thing about McDaniel that the yeah. other two don't have. Yeah, he's enthusiastic. Yes, he actually likes to talk to the media. Kyle doesn't, but he's he's good he's good about it. The he other guy, phony. he's a phony. He, he doesn't. Yeah. He's a phony. He's putting on an act. I, yes. Look, I don't like him. And here's no. the thing. I really liked his grandfather. His grandfather wasn't like that at all. John McVeigh was a gentleman. He wore a mm -hmm. suit. He, mm -hmm. you know, if he would see me, he would always shake my hand. Even if I had just shit on the team that day in an article, Lowell, how are you doing? It's so nice to see you. And I'll tell you one, another thing that McVeigh did. Mm -hmm. As you know, Iggy, Bill Walsh. That's what John Lynch is like. That's what John Lynch is like. You know what I'm going to say? Bill Walsh was yeah. so emotionally up and down and yeah. McVeigh would sit with him and talk with him. It was almost like a psychiatrist yeah. and he would keep him uh, level, yeah. level. And you think yeah. Lynch does that too? No, I was going to say just, I could really shit on the Niners that day. And if I walk by John Lynch in the hall, he'll say, he, I mean, he'll make eye contact, won't hesitate. Hey, Grant, great to see you. Sticks his hand out, yeah. shakes my hand, keeps it pushing. Like that's John, no matter what. Yeah, and you no admire what. that, right? I do, I do. Yeah, it doesn't mean he likes me. It just means he's a stand-up guy. He's a gentleman. 
Yes. He may or may not like me. I don't know, but that it's that's not what that's about. It's about what he stands for. And it's about doing business. Yes. Yes. I admire that. So we got Kyle and McDaniel. We both like them. They're authentic. We seem to like McDaniel's authentic self a little bit more than Kyle's. Just because yes. it's more playful. But McVeigh, you're not fooling anyone. Talking no. about your culture that you're building. You've been a coach for seven years. You got a Super Bowl victory. Wonderful. But the main reason you got that is because Kyle blew it. Yeah. And if you haven't built a culture after seven years, buddy, <laughs> I, I don't know yeah. about you. What are you doing over there? Timmy, Timmy. Jesse, Jesse's not going li to let this go. In 2001, Brady threw 18 touchdown passes and 12 picks. Before Moss, the most TDC he threw was 28. Every year before, uh, missed the three between 12 and uh, picks, picks. His game got better the more he played. Okay. Th thanks, Jesse. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> Daza0187 says, was Sunday just a tough division game? That was a really tight game until the two turnovers, and we have to play much better uh, teams this season. Okay, he, uh, he, here's what I want to say. Go. The, the Rams kept it close in the first half, but they weren't good enough to really compete with the 49ers. And when push came to shove, the Niners were so much better than a mediocre team. Oh, here's the way I saw it. One, Brock Purdy could have put the game away with those uh, deep passes yeah. and didn't. Also, I thought Steve Wilkes' game plan was way too deferential to the Rams. Like, way, like not aggressive at all. Let's be as cautious as possible here. Play way off. Keep everything in front. It's like, why? Like, you gave up 17 points in one half. You have a great pass rush. You have a very expensive defense. These guys have a Puka Nakua and Tutu Atwell, like, challenge him. And what he did was just, I'm not challenging you guys at all. I'm going to hang back, hang back, hang back, and wait, wait for you guys to make mistakes. And fortunately, in the third quarter, that, that running back tipped the ball to Isaiah Oliver, and that changed everything. But until then, I feel like the game could have won either way because Steve Wilkes was afraid to use all that talent he has. I don't know. I don't know. It's strange. I mean, how many uncontested 10-yard catches did they give up in this game? I, that's true. That's it's true. wide open. And I don't blame the players. I blame the scheme. Like, come on, man. Challenge these guys. Play play man-to-man -man coverage. Zone? Yeah. Would Salah have done that? Would he have challenged them more? Yeah, he would. Yes. Salah and yes. Because if you have Nick Bosa, Javon Hargrave, Eric Armstead, Drake Jackson, these great pass rushers, but you play your everyone 10 yards off, the ball can come out really quick, and those pass rushers can't even get a chance to affect the game, which is what was happening. You don't expect Stafford to be that um, mature, I guess, and uh, restrained and just take what the defense gives you. But he did all game. And he was doing great until that running back dropped the ball. So the Niners got lucky to a degree. Maybe, maybe they were counting on that to happen eventually. But can't you dictate? You have all these great players. Why are you hanging back and letting them dictate? I didn't like that. I think Wilkes needs to be more aggressive. So hey, how, how many sacks did the Niners have in that game? One. One. Oh, yeah, because he's getting the ball out so fast. Who had, he, do you yeah. remember who had the sack? Who had the sack? Was it Hargrave? I think it was Hargrave. Yeah, okay. I think it was Hargrave. Um, Dave says, would it be fair to delete Brady's stats from his deflate gate season I, uh, so it doesn't count for his overall career stats? Are we talking about Brady? I don't know. I don't, I don't care. Professor Lawless says, love and respect you, Mr. Uh, Cone, but Kyle Sanahan is honesty. He doesn't run far from hard. He doesn't run from hard questions. I respectfully disagree. He's the biggest jerk there is. Okay, Professor, let me say there are bigger jerks. Um, <laughs> so um, he never takes responsibility himself. Yep. And Iggy and I have said that. But he he will point out where his players have fallen short. Yeah. So in that regard, m most coaches won't do that. He does it to deflect blame from himself, but he candidly will say sometimes what players do wrong. Um, I, I think, for example, um, Belichick is a way bigger jerk than Kyle Shanahan. Iggy, would you agree, agree with that? I would agree. Dave Autoglasses, did you and your dad not have a show last week? We yeah, did, we couldn't do we're it. Back. We couldn't do it. Yeah, we're back. Tyler says, Grant, did you see the new signing? Anthony Brown, cornerback. I did not see the news. Check out Anthony Brown. Let's see. 
What do we know about Anthony Brown? He was with Dallas for a very long time. He started 12 games for Dallas last year. Uh, last year, he gave up a quarterback rating of 89. He's 30 years old. Okay, 29. Better than nothing. But they're, they're now signing guys off the street to play cornerback, which is not ideal. Jimmy Kwan says, you and your pops are the best. A lot of men do not have fathers, father figures, or communication with them. I enjoy the cone zone the most. Your dad has some great stories. Your pop spits out facts. Thanks, Jimmy. You know what my dad is? Baller. <laughs> my rhino says, curious. My nephew is uh, OT on buffs. What are your thoughts on Dion in the circus? Uh, thought much better than last season. Still not sure if I am a fan. I don't really watch college football. I guess he's doing I, I, uh, the winning and he's promoting his team. Yeah. I don't know. Let me say, um, I don't watch college football anymore because it's pro football. It's not what college is about. College is yeah. about getting getting a degree, going for four years. Um, I, I just don't like it. I want to tell you, Dion once played a season for the Giants. He was a great athlete and he was a two-sport guy. I felt in that lock, in that clubhouse, he was very unpleasant. Dion? Yeah, he wasn't this smiling, uh, self-aggrandizing, publicity-seeking guy. He was, he was, I felt, off-putting. Fornelli, thank you for the 65. I'm not sure where that's from, but thank you. Foreign money. Mike Drops with Monsa says, game plan prevented quick scoring. Kyle's game plan being unbothered matters most. They score at a certain pace. Quick scoring is a detriment to the scheme. Kyle is more of a DC than Wilkes anyway. They're very Kyle is more of the defensive coordinator than Wilkes? Hold on. He's being sarcastic. Oh, okay. He's being sarcastic. Flav says a baller doesn't give a damn what you have to say or think. Has priorities and work ethic dialed. Most importantly, wins. Brock is as much of a baller as you could be after getting injured in his first chance at a Super Bowl. Okay. He's as much of a baller as you could possibly be. Okay. That doesn't Dazza mean says, he's a baller. It doesn't mean he's a baller. We let Puka, a rookie, go for 15 uh, receptions for 147 yards. It was all like right. uncontested too. Serenity says, my favorite show with Papa Cone. Love you both. Learning lots and playing three fantasy teams on top of rooting for the Niners. Is CMC deciding to stay on the field himself? Crazy. Wrap him in bubble wrap, please. Oh, I don't know. we need it. Iggy, we need to talk about that. Now, uh, uh, he's a very brave guy. Yes. Um, but he's small. He's yes. small compared to other, you know, big uh, running backs. Iggy, why run him up the middle? Of course you need to run him up the middle, and a lot of those really turn great. He should have some relief. I don't understand what – and he has other good running backs. Um, yeah. I feel that – and again, maybe I'm just a nervous Nelly, but I feel that he's – risking too much with cmc that he's not i'm saying he's gonna get him hurt but he might get him hurt do, what do you feel iggy i mean I, I would i feel the exact same way but i think it's funny that people are surprised um and they expect kyle to change his dad did this with terrell davis when i was a kid we all remember terrell davis he was at least as good as christian mccaffrey if not better he's in the hall of fame and he really came on the scene in 1996, in 96, they gave him 21 carries a game. Then in 97, they gave him 24 carries a game. In 98, they gave him 24 carries a game. Eventually, towards ACL, and never really was the same. They don't go easy on running backs, the Shanahan's. They give you the ball over and over and over and over and over again. And if you get hurt, it's next man up. It's how they've been since 1996. If you don't believe me, ask Terrell Davis. Sorry, Christian. It's going to keep happening. And it's not in the best interest of the team, but... If they can keep him healthy for two years, maybe they can get two Super Bowls. But the point is, he has other really good running backs he that does. they could put in occasionally. And especially running up the middle, they might even be better. Right. I mean, they used to trust Elijah Mitchell. They used to love Elijah Mitchell. They used to give him all kind of carries. What happened to that? Yeah. Now you, he can't get on the field at all. McCaffrey played all the snaps in the last game. All of them. Batman, 29, says D-line overrated. Quick passes, release, negates it. I mean, that's one reason why yeah, you might not want to spend all of your cap dollars on the D-line because there are ways to negate a pass rush. If you don't trust your DBs and you play them far off, you could just throw a bunch of quick passes. Now, Robert Sala would say, I'm not afraid of quick passes. You're not going to beat me with quick passes. Maybe. Depends. Depending on the quarterback. 
I mean, Brock Purdy wins a lot of game throwing, games throwing uh, quick passes. Fernelli says, what's up, Cones? Greetings from Sweden. Doing a great job. Will Bosa get back to his sharp play from last year? I hope so. I hope so. so Not sure. It's so Not nice sure. to hear from you from Sweden. Thank you. Thank you. Niner fans are everywhere. Tyler Barden says, who would win head-to-head 23 Niners or 13 Niners? It's a tough one. I don't know. That team back then had such a good offensive line. This one doesn't. I could see uh, Alden Smith and Justin Smith really giving Colton McKivitz problems. Lowell looking good, young man. <laughs> it's true. Josh Wyatt, Wilts called out his players publicly after week two, said they weren't playing to the standard. I don't remember Soller or Ryan's ever doing that. No, they were much more positive. Uh, Wilts is more like Kyle. He's dour. Anoop says McDaniel thinks he's smarter than everyone. McVeigh is a good people manager and game planner. Kyle's a slow adapter in game like a wounded lion. Whew. Um, I don't know that McDaniel thinks he's smarter than everyone. Did you ever get that impression? Maybe. I don't know. I think he thinks he's smarter Maybe. than Kyle. <laughs> Office of Jed York says PFF graded right tackle way higher than 74. Pass block zero. Okay. Okay. Mark says, from my view, it looked like CMC waved off Mitchell. I've heard people saying that. Hold on. Yeah. I, 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 this is new to me. I've heard people saying that. CMC is not the coach. I know. He doesn't get to wave off anybody. No, no. Uh, if Kyle is really the coach, he says, don't do that waving off stuff. We yeah. want to substitute for you for a while. And yeah. how does Mitchell feel? If he? Yeah. How do you think Mitchell feels if CMC waves him off? Is that how you treat a teammate? Right. And privately, if that's really happening and I were Mitchell, I'll tell you how I would feel. I would hate Christian McCaffrey. I'd hate yeah, him. Who are you? Who and the I hell would, are you? And I'd be angry at the coach. Who's running the team? Yep. Okay. I got to leave in a little bit because I got Kyle talks in about hour 45. But we got a couple of things we want to talk quickly. You, we didn't get to talk about Aaron Rodgers because we didn't have our show last week. But we need to spend at least five minutes talking about Aaron Rodgers' illustrious tenure with the Jets. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I feel so sorry for Robert Sala. He so he it, it's Faust. He sold his soul to get this guy. And we said it at the time: do not sell your soul to Aaron Rodgers. It's not going to end up well. We didn't see this coming, but it's one way or yeah. another. Now, a lot of people, people I respect, have said. You know, it's the turf in that stadium, Giant Stadium. You blame it on the turf. It, it, you know, it's not Rogers' fault. Well, a lot of other people played that day, two days on that turf, and he's the only one I think who uh, destroyed his Achilles. What I think is, he's done. Iggy, he's he, done. Rogers cannot defend himself. He can't move. So if he comes back because he's got this new surgery, he'll get hurt again. Here's, oh, I'm going to give a little historical perspective. Rogers is a great, has been, a, he's no longer, has been a great athlete. Part of being a great athlete is believing in yourself when other people yeah. don't believe in you. He didn't get drafted where he wanted to. He had to sit behind Favre, but he never lost. He had to go to himself. junior college. He had to go to junior college. Good point. All that. So he, one of the things that made him great was his self-belief. Great athletes never lose that self-belief. When it was the end of Willie McCovey's career, he couldn't play very well anymore, but he still believed in himself because that's what great athletes do. And someone finally had to say to him, your career is over. Someone needs to say to Aaron Rodgers, your self-belief is a hindrance now. You're going to get yourself hurt. Your career is over. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's time. He's got to stop. Um, it's just really too bad that Robert Sala hitched his wagon to him, and now he could miss the playoffs for the third year in a row. Yeah, he has that other quarterback who's terrible. Uh, uh, Robert Sala has a real problem, and you know what? I feel very sorry for him. I feel very sorry for him, too. And it's tough. Like He's put together a really good defense. He's put together a good team, but ultimately it comes down to the quarterback spot, whether you're going to make it as a, a head coach. And you probably, as a defensive coach, get one shot. And... He had a he, he got like a get out of jail free card. Zach Wilson wasn't the answer, just like Trey Lance wasn't the answer for the Niners. But you got Aaron Rodgers, and you felt okay, things are going to be okay. Four snaps, four snaps, four yeah. snaps. 
It was, Sorry, buddy. It, it was pathetic. It was pathetic. All right, forget enough of him. Niners play Thursday night against the Giants. Ten and a half point favorites. Giants lost their first game forty to nothing, then fell their fell behind their second game twenty to nothing. Came back and won that game against the Cardinals, who are awful. Giants might be awful too. Is there any is there any way the Niners can lose this game? Okay. Uh, first of all, I think the Niners are going to win this game, and I don't think it's going to be by a little. I think the Niners are going to embarrass these guys. Yeah. So th- that's where we stand, and Iggy agrees. They could lose if Brock Purdy gets hurt. Yep. And 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 the new Steve Young comes in. They could lose if Steve Young comes in. Um, <laughs> they could lose if they can't handle a mobile quarterback. Yep. Which is some one of the things they're not all that great at. Having said that, Iggy, I don't see them losing at all. How about you? Well, they are starting to show issues on defense. If they do that thing they did last week where they play real far off and just concede a bunch of short throws, and now the, um, the quarterback is also mobile, and he can take that and get out of the pocket, the defense could really struggle. They gave up 17 points and a half last week. But unless Brock Purdy gets hurt, I don't see how the Niners don't score 30 points in this game. So right. either the defense can continue to kind of struggle and figure it out while the offense can just win the game for them as long as McCaffrey and Purdy are both healthy. You could, you, we've seen it. They could lose Debo for a month. They could have Brandon Ayuk playing with one shoulder. They're still going to th- score 30 points. Those two are key. So there would have to be injuries. There would have to be a lot of turnovers. The Niners would have to essentially beat themselves. Ah, good point. They would have to beat themselves. Think. Yeah. They would have to beat um, themselves. I remember sometimes when the Niners would lose games they absolutely should have won. And afterward, after wins, Bill Walsh could be very bitchy. But after losses, he was very confessional because he was so emotional. And I remember one time they got killed and he said, what can I tell you, Lowell? The wheels came off. The, the wheels, wheels came, came off. off. The wheels came off. It was a very interesting image. In order for the Niners to lose on Thursday, the wheels would have to come off. Absolutely. And that's why it's an interesting game for the Niners. Like, not much to prove. Ten and a half point favorites at home. It's your home opener. Everyone expects you to kick the shit out of the Giants. If you win by four, people say, what happened? What the fuck happened? That, if you win by seven, people are saying, what the fuck happened? So they need to be dominant like they were week one against the – I mean, they don't need to. But – they're expected to be dominant like they were at week one against the Steelers, and I think they will be. I think part of the reason the Rams kept it close is I think they had a pretty good game plan considering they had a, a huge talent gap. They went after Ambry Thomas right away, played him off the field. They know the Niners. They're not as good as the Niners, but they know them. Do the Giants know the Niners? Yeah, do they no. really know? Are they just going to be out there trying to establish their culture and doing what they do until it's they're down 20 nothing and they're trying to figure out what the Niners' weaknesses are? That's what the Steelers did week one. I mean, they, it's like they had no idea where to go against the Niners. No clue. It's true. That. Yeah. yeah. Some of these teams just aren't as prepared as you think. It's like, wait a second. Did you did you not watch me and my we, – we were going to break it down for you. We told you what to do. I don't know. These and non-divisional you would, opponents. And you would agree, though, that Kyle is hyper-prepared. He's prepared. Hyper-prepared. Yes. Hyper-prepared. Absolutely. I admire that about him. Yes, I agree. All right, we got a couple more, and then a couple more, and then we're out. Ryan G. Hensley says, if you're a baller, you're probably also a shot caller and have 20-inch blades on your Impala. My dad doesn't know what he's talking about, but I can't get, I finished that line either, but hey, Ryan, good call, good pull. Heroic victory says, think about it. Just like the Rams had to get that last field goal, CMC had to keep his number up for all the whale bets around the world. Did you see that the, the Rams were seven and a half point dogs? They were down 10, and with like two seconds left, they kicked a long field goal, so they lost by seven instead of 10. Did you see that? Yeah, well, I didn't understand what, what, what was going on. I don't it, know. It, it but... made you wonder about the betting, you mean? Yes. I'm in a, a pool. Uh, I, there's no money in it, but someone asked me to like make five picks a week. So I picked the Niners to cover that spread and they didn't i lost because of that field goal it makes you wonder like wait a second wait a second you still lost why did you kick that field goal what are you doing yeah i i just didn't understand it very strange i don't want to i don't know uh it says food review from oakland or santa clara this week 
Sure, you like that? You like that? The guy well, he wants like, he wants what? us to get recommend a restaurant. No, he wants me to do another food review. Oh, I got it. Okay, since I'm in town. Flav says you need a ring and or to ball for multiple years in order to be a baller. Uh, Brock, not there yet, but he's 100% on the path to Ballerville. He's not 100% on the path. He may be on the path, but he's not 100% on the path. I he's disagree. reached a fork in the road, and he he's has to decide whether he wants to, whether he's going to yeah. hit those long throws or not. If he's going to be the guy who misses those long throws, not a baller. Fork in the road. Go to, uh, got your back, Grant. Thank you. I don't even know who that is that you just referenced. Oh, well. Dad, this was a great show. It was a great show. I you love you guys. really good. I love you. You look young. Uh, you and nice I'll see haircut. you tonight. I'm having dinner at their house tonight. I already got the That's bottle right. of wine uh, picked out that I'm bringing over. That's right. We usually do Thursdays, but the Niners are playing a football game on Thursday, which can we just say real quick is, I know people talk oh. about Thursday Night Football, how stupid it is. It's ridiculous. It's a Shonda. As you would say, they should just have two Monday night football games every week and no Thursday night game. You know, it's kind of amazing to me when Richard Sherman was an outspoken young man in the NFL. He, he did a whole essay about how irresponsible and wrong Thursday night football is. Then last year he was working for Thursday night football. <laughs> he was an analyst for Thursday night football. It's like, yeah, man. So I understand like a lot of people make money off of it and I'll probably put it on. Like, I watch Thursday night football in spite of. Everything that's wrong with it, but it's awful, awful. For, <laughs> it's so worst. unfair to the players. They're still hurting from the previous game. They can't game plan. It's it stinks. It really. Sh I agree, and it's because the league doesn't care about the players or the quality. Flav says yes, he is Lil. Okay, about, yes, about, about, I, I think it's funny. We could just do a, a stream and just say things like, "I don't know if Brock Purdy's really the real deal," and just have a bunch of people say it five bucks. Yeah, he is ten bucks. You're wrong. Like, thanks. Tell me again. Make it 20 bucks this time. <laughs> Dad, I love you. I love Bye. you, sweetie. Sweetie. Uh, I'll see you tonight at 630. You call me Iglet too, Dad, while you're at it. Thanks. Okay, Iglet. I'll see you tonight.